Hello and welcome to Delicious Simplicity. I'm Anna Torkakis. On the menu today we have Greek spinach and cheese triangles, spicy lamb meatballs, French style risotto, and of course fresh berries for dessert with frozen vanilla yogurt and chocolate shavings. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to start working on is on the French style risotto. So in here I have some um, butter that's already melted and to that I'm going to add about a quarter cup of um, onions that I've diced finely. I'm going to put those in here and let those um, cook for about a minute just to become translucent. So I had two tablespoons of butter in there. And to that I'm going to add one cup of long grain rice. and stir that in. Cook this for about a minute. I'm going to braise the rice here a little bit. So that's about, about a minute. And then um, I'm also going to add to this a little bit of the uh, some French vermouth, about a quarter of a cup. So very similar to making risotto, up a, the Italian style risotto up until now. You know, the, in the Italian style risotto, you, you essentially do the same thing, but the difference being that you're using a different kind of rice. In the Italian uh, risotto type, you, you would use the short grain rice because it, it's fat and it's got a lot more starch in it, so it becomes really nice and creamy when, when it cooks. Whereas here, we're using the long grain. So that makes a difference. And then the other, you'll see in a second, uh, the other major difference. So I'm going to put this in. Similarly, again, to the Italian style risotto where you add wine and you let that boil off for a minute. So when you're making this, you want a pot that has a tight-fitting lid on it. So the other major difference between this and the Italian risotto is that in the Italian risotto, you would warm up or heat up your um, broth and then you would ladle, ladle it in a, a ladle at a time until the rice is cooked and you would continue stirring so that it helps with the rice releasing the starch and, ha and giving you a nice creamy product. Here on the other hand, now that I have the, the vermouth that's boiled off and the rice is all nice and coated with it, um, I'm going to add uh, two cups of chicken broth Oops. add the two cups in once it comes to a boil it you just put a lid on and let it cook for about 15 minutes so the next thing I'm going to work on is the uh, Greek spinach and cheese triangles now those can sort of seem a little daunting to work with, but once you get going, it, once you see it done, it really isn't all that hard. And these are um, really a popular little dish to have at any party that you have or for dinner or if you want to do it then. Um, you'll never have leftovers. So in here I have eight ounces of feta cheese. I'm going to crumble. You want to do the feta cheese by itself because if you put your other ingredients in here, um, it'll be really hard to mash these up. All right, so to this, I'm going to add a cup of ricotta, just to, because this is a little bit salty, as you know. So I'm going to, um, you know, sort of um, blend it with the ricotta. Up. And I'm going to switch over here to my rice for a minute. So what you do is once it, your rice comes to a boil, you want to give it a quick, good stir. Put a lid on it. Reduce the heat so that you just have a simmer. 15 minutes. In the meantime, back here, I'm going to measure I'm going to measure my ricotta cheese here. There we go. Something else 
I forgot to do about the rice. I knew there was something else that made it French. So I'm also going to add to this. I should have done this early on, uh, when I right after I added the uh, the broth, but it's okay. It's still soon enough. So I'm going to add three sprigs of parsley in here. I'm going to add a bay leaf, and I'm going to add the magic ingredients of saffron. Now, saffron is probably the most expensive spice there is, and um, I think it's worth it. So you just use a pinch, and you can use this really saffron in any dish that you want to give some color to, and this is perfect. So I'm going to stir this. This actually I bought in Greece, but you, it, it's expensive there too. And you just need a few threads. It gives food a really nice flavor to it, and the color just makes everything special. Oops. There we go. So we'll just let that cook. Back to the feta cheese triangle. So this is mixed. And then I'm going to add my um, spinach. So the spinach is, that I use is frozen. Uh, so you get the 10-ounce frozen package, and you let it thaw, and then you squeeze out all the, the water that's in it. So I'm going to add that to this. I'm going to add, I'm going to add two eggs. I'm going to beat a little bit. Oops, spill some. There we go. And this recipe makes about 25 mini triangles. So you can make your triangles different sizes, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. So I have my mixture here. So here's my phyllo. And these uh, come in two sizes. Sometimes, and I, I pick up whichever I find. Uh, this is the one pound, like a whole roll. Sometimes you find two. They're smaller, so there's two rolls in one package. It's still a pound, but it's just, um, it's just two packages. So what I do is I take the roll. So this is really big. So I'm gonna, I want to make mini, mini um, cheese triangles. So what I do is I measure out approximately about three, three inches in length. And so I cut it, I think, just about here. And that is what I'm going to use. So now comes, and this, these really do dry out a lot. In here, I've melted some butter. Now, you can, you, you can do just butter um, and to, to, um, for your layers. I like to do half and half. Sometimes I actually just do oil. So I'm going to do about a cup of oil. Right, and I'm just going to eyeball it because it doesn't, you know, it doesn't really matter. So you want to do about half and half. There we go. That should work. And if it doesn't, I can just add more. Then you can melt your butter in the microwave as well. So I need a little brush that I had. So here's the brush. So you, you do want to give this a, a mix like that. And I need a tray. There we go with the tray. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I keep peeking over at the rice here. I think it's a little fast of a simmer. So I'm going to lower this even further. There we go. So I'm going to take this and just butter it. Well, this one I'm not going to use. So just enough. It really is a lot of fun once you start, once you get accustomed to working with the phyllo. You know, I just started dating my husband. I'm Italian, he's Greek, and so I was talking with friends at work, and there, and there was this woman who, had made, who was making these, um, you know, spanakopitas, and she was telling me about phyllo dough, which I had never heard of at the time. 
And so I said, oh, I'll have to go home and try to make them. And she, and she told me, she said, well, you know, you have to be really careful because that phyllo dough is very, very thin. And I thought, oh, okay, thin. I mean, how thin can it be? <laughs> Little did I know that you could literally see through it. So yeah, I learned the hard way how it, it dries up. So I need really a teaspoon here. So you take a little teaspoon and you just put a small amount. So depending on how big your piece is, sometimes I tend to put too much in it. So and then, so you put a little bit and you put it at the corner and you just go right across over and then down, just like when you see them fold a flag, same thing. So then you come over. You want to make sure that you touch the edge and then you get a nice, kind of a um, shape. And you just keep coming down. The key thing is to keep those edges um, evenly, like so. And then you just fold it over, put it in your pan. And you do want to brush the top as well. Again, you want to, because that's going to be key to getting them nice and brown when they bake. And you just continue repeating. I like to use two sheets, but you could use three. And you could butter. Sometimes that one's stuck, so I'm going to use them both. Um, you can also butter both sides of your sheets if you'd like. So I'm always aiming to make that perfect triangle. But the interesting thing I find is that when you make it, no matter how they look like when you've made them, once they're baked, they look perfect. So I'm going to give them a little butter and oil on both sides. Might have mentioned this already, but you can certainly, um, you know, butter both sides of the sheet. I usually just do one. Okay, so this made enough for a tray. And again, if you have, if you'd like to see, if you have more questions, uh, or if you'd like to see this, you can certainly contact the studio here, rctv.org or me, Anna, at rctv.org. And I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have on these, how to make them. There we go. All right, perfect. So I'm going to put this in the oven. The oven I have at, this oven I put at 375. Uh, 350 would do as well. So this, is, this oven here, we're going to do it at 375 for about 20 minutes. All right, so the next thing that we're going to work on is the spicy lamb meatballs. So those are those tiny little uh, meatballs that you can um, use for a number of things. First, though, before I move on, I want to look at my rice, and it looks like it's just about done, so I'm going to turn it off and set it aside. Oh, it smells wonderful. I'm going to put it aside and leave it there until I plate it. Uh, so here I have a pound of ground lamb. That I'm going to break up a little bit, almost as if you were making meatballs, which you kind of are. So here I have, just like you know, ground beef. I have the lamb, uh, ground lamb here. I'm going to add an egg to it. I'm going to wait on the egg. I'm going to add some uh, breadcrumbs, about a quarter cup, which I measure like my way. That, that looks about right. So these are breadcrumbs that um, I made myself. I usually, I haven't bought breadcrumbs in ages. I typically just make my own. So there's always some leftover bread around. So I have the 
bread in here and I'm going to add an egg. So for the breadcrumbs, that was about a quarter of a cup, a couple of tablespoons, something like that. Um, and if you want to, you can add salt and pepper, which I'm not adding right now. Then I'm just going to mix it. Now the interesting thing about this is that the, I put the herbs on the outside. So you, if you want to, you can put them inside, but I'll show you in a second what I do. Put it aside for a minute. In the meantime, I'm going to make the mixture that I'm going to use in a, in a minute. And here I'm going to add some olive oil. So what I'm going to do here, instead of putting the herbs and spices in the, in the meat and, you know, um, and roll them up, what I'm going to do is make sort of like a dressing. I'm going to add some oil and a bunch of herbs. And then I'm going to roll the little meatballs in that, in that mixture. So I'm going to add a little oil here about a tablespoon or so. There we go. Some oregano. About half a teaspoon of oregano. I'm going to add about half a teaspoon of mint. about a tablespoon of um, minced parsley and some paprika to about a quarter of a teaspoon. I'm actually going to add a little bit more oil. Mix this up. Stir it all together. All right, so in the meantime, I'm also going to heat up the pan that I'm going to be cooking them on. So here's the pan. I'm going to heat this up. I'm going to add a couple of tablespoons of oil in here, or maybe one tablespoon of oil in here. I'm going to take a small onion and quarter this. Actually, let me see how the quarters look. I might just slice it instead or do eights. Yeah. Well, this is a small, but I'm a small onion, but I'm still going to make small pieces. Okay, well, this heats up. I'm going to give my hands a quick rinse so I can work with the meat. Once the oil's nice and hot, I'm going to add the onions to that. In the meantime, I'm going to be making the little meatballs do need to mix it a little bit with your hands. You don't want to mix it too much. Same thing with ground beef. You don't want to mix it too much because then it becomes really tough. But just enough to blend everything. So I like to make these the size of a walnut. Just about so. So you can, I, I don't know if you can see this, but it, the, the texture is really much softer. And then depending on the size of your egg uh, that you use here, it will, um, you know, make a difference as well. So then you just kind of roll this in here. Pat it down so you don't want it to be too thick because it's going to cook in the skillet so you don't want it to, um, you know, burn it on the outside and then have the inside not be cooked well enough. So this should be just about done. Oh, and it is. So I'm going to cook the, those onions for a little bit. Oh, onions smell good. So you want to heat on a little higher when you're doing the onions, but then you want to lower it because if it's too hot, then the meat will cook really quick on the outside, and the inside, as I said, may not be cooked well enough. All right, so I'm going to try to work really quick and put these in. There we go. So I like, you want them to be about a quarter of an inch. It's good to have um, kind of like a guide. I like to use a spoon. But they all come out just about the same size. Now you can make these bigger if you'd like, of course. But if, if you want to make them for a party, then you definitely want them small. 
Another nice way or fun way to serve them is on skewers. Beautiful. I'll make some more now that I've made room. All right, so these are cooking here, which is good. I'm gonna actually I'm gonna take the um, the onions out because they look like they're nice and brown. Maybe a little less cooking would have been good too. I'm gonna put these on the side. Oh, one other way that you could do these, uh, use them, is to make uh, like a real typical Greek sandwich, and that is with the pita bread. So you can make that the um, lamb little meatballs, put it in the pita bread, fold it over, put in some of that tzatziki, as it's called, or yogurt cucumber sauce, some tomatoes, uh, some onions, some uh, lettuce, and it would be absolutely delicious. All right, so I'm, I'm going to let these cook for a little bit. And so I'm going to go back to my rice here. Ah, beautiful. Get my bowl. Fluff it up with a fork. Look at that. Make sure I fish out the bay leaf and the parsley. Look, isn't that beautiful? The little specks of yellow. Beautiful golden French style risotto with saffron. Put that over here. Meantime, I want to check on my um, spiny coffee dust and see how they're doing. Oh, perfect. Look at these. See, once they're baked, they all look perfect. I'm going to put these in a, uh, on a plate. These are very hot. Look at that. Picture perfect. Did you see how easy it was? Again, if you'd like to make them, please don't hesitate to contact us here. You know, I find one of the fun things about cooking is presentation. You can do whatever you'd like. So I'm using this plate just to, just to make it more fun. I'm going to use some dill for decoration here. There we go. Back to my meatballs. I think it's pretty much done. Turn them off. Remember, the one thing about cooking is to have fun with it. So one of the things you could do with these little miniature meatballs is lamb uh, meatballs is to use these little skewers and you could um, do something like this. Have some onions. Oops. I'm just going to use a small piece just to give you an idea. You can make these any size you'd like. One of the things you could do is just thread them through 
And especially if you have kids, little kids, or older kids, or any, any age is a kid, we're all kids at heart. You can add other um, vegetables to this as well. So you can make like little um, skewers like that. So I think these would be pretty. So you could have a whole row of these. But I think they also by themselves, they go very nicely. Put some decoration on here. So dill is the decoration of the day. A little garnish here. Yeah, always, you can always use what you have it on hand, you know. And here I have my fruit, my trademark dessert. What would a meal be without some fruit? So here we have this beautiful bowl of fruit. Uh, as you know, we get it from uh, Calariso's uh, farm stand and garden center. I'm trying to make some room here because the other thing I'm going to do to that is add to it some frozen uh, yogurt. So given that we're doing some other Greek dishes, I went along with the Greek theme. So this is frozen or softened frozen Greek yogurt right here. And I'm going to put a small scoop. You could use vanilla or any kind of ice cream if you want to. Well, it's a little soft, but that's okay. Did that intentionally. So here's the uh, little scoop of van frozen vanilla yogurt on it. And then to this, I'm going to add some chocolate shavings that I have right here. Nice big chunk of chocolate. And I'm going to cut big, thick chunks. There. Oh, this chocolate smells good too. There we go. So here's the dessert that I'm going to put right there, front, front stage. So here today we have made another delicious meal and we've made the spinach and cheese triangles with, simple, with a simple mixture of spinach, feta cheese, an egg in a phyllo dough shaped into little triangles. And we've also made the spicy lamb meatballs, which is simply ground lamb with egg, some eggs, some breadcrumbs, uh, shaped into a, a walnut size uh, me mini meatballs and rolled in herbs. And we've also made a French style risotto, long grain rice with herbs, saffron, and a touch of French vermouth and also a delicious um, dish of berries with frozen yogurt and uh, lots of thick chunks of chocolate, uh, another healthy meal and delicious and a fun time in the kitchen. And for this, we want to thank Winfrey's Fudge and Chocolate for providing the wonderful chocolate for us. And also thank you to Calories' Farm Stand and Garden Center for the produce and many other products that they provide. And, as I mentioned, some of these recipes are from my uh, cookbook, Delicious Simplicity. Uh, the, some are not, and you can certainly feel free to call us here at RCTV. And so thank you for watching, and hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>